Welcome to this week's Elaine A. Powers' Reptile Side Chat. And today we're going to be talking about color and the color in a green iguana, which isn't just green, and the magical cells called chromatophores that allow reptiles to have these wonderful colors. Uh, they're also present in us humans and many other animals. Now, the green iguana which I have here today, um, comes actually in many colors in the wild. And so with genetic breeding, different color morphs have been developed that help illustrate the different pigment cells that are present in the green iguana. So now this is your typical green iguana. He's, he's got a nice, lovely green, uh, but you'll also notice he has some bluish type uh, highlights on his stomach and uh, other green iguanas might have orange or reddish highlights as well um, and we're going to be talking about them. So the colors that are usually seen in a green iguana are actually many colors of green, yellow, blue, red, and black. Now the black is the very common melanin. Uh, we have melanin in our skin as well and uh, so it's very common for the black part. Now the pigmentation in an iguana serves several purposes. One is camouflage. You know, we've talked about how the stripes break it up so that it looks like those are just shadows between leaves. Um, but it's also for collecting sunlight and warmth. Um, reptiles, of course, are cold-blooded or ectotherms, which means that they have to get their body temperature warmed from the environment or even cooled by the environment. They're dependent on the environment to maintain their desired body temperature. And this body temperature is important for things like digestion. So being able to regulate how much heat you absorb is very important in, in an iguana. And so a, a lot of times in the morning, you might see that an iguana is rather dark looking um, even though it might have been a bright green later in the day, it's pretty dark in the morning. And that's because it's spread out the melanin in the cell to be able to absorb more of the sunlight's rays and warm it up. Now, the interesting thing about these chromatophores is that they contain the pigment granules in them. And it's on kind of like a, a net or a network so that the granules can be spread out from this in the cells or then contracted back in. So in the morning, he's going to have his melanin spread out in his melanophore, which is a kind of chromatophore. And then later in the day, when he's nice and toasty, um, I like my iguanas to be the temperature of a freshly baked loaf of bread, uh, then the melanin is contracted in the cells, and he'll the other colors will be allowed to show through. Now, he's... He's got green, so he's a typical green iguana, but he doesn't actually have any green pigment. Now, as I mentioned, the pigment is in the dermis layer, not the epidermis. This tough outer side, you know, that make up the scales um, is actually clear, although sometimes a little bit of the melanin uh, will show through. But uh, this is from, from him, so you can see that it's actually a, a clear piece of keratin, so, and this is the epidermis. So the pigment cells are in the dermis, the layer underneath the hard protective layer. And green iguanas primarily have two pigments, yellow in the xanthophores and blue in the iridophores. And it isn't a true blue pigment, it's how the crystals in the iridophores bend the light so that the blue light wavelengths are shown. So, and as you learned in your basic art class, if you mix yellow and blue, what do you get? You get green. So by mixing the blue pigments and the yellow pigments, you get a green iguana. Now these, uh, the pigments, granules themselves, are made up of a, a few compounds called carotenoids, 
uh, a very famous one of that is the, what makes a carrot orange, um, pteridines, and of course the ever popular melanin. Now, as I was showing you, you know, he, he's kind of, he's a solid green on back, but he's lighter color on underneath. And if you look at fish, you'll notice the same thing, that they're darker on the back and lighter on the stomach. Do you know why that is? It's because if you're looking down on an animal from above, you're going to see leaves and shade. So the dark coloration blends in nicely with the environment. But if a predator is looking up at an animal, it's looking up into the sunshine, into a lighter background. So you want your underneath to be lighter so that it uh, blends in with the sun better. So um, for many, many years, ig uh, the iguanas were imported. Um, they're all bred in Central and South America and then sent up by the millions for the pet trade in the US. But then uh, captive breeding began locally. And through this, they were able to change the ratio of the pigments in the iguanas dermis to create color morphs. And so today I'm going to introduce you to a couple of color morphs that I have living in my house. All right, so thank you, Ezra. Say goodbye to everyone. And uh, thank you for being part of our talk today. All right. So, of course, um, they have to make iguanas of different colors. And so a very popular one is to remove the melanin so that you get a lighter colored and sometimes even an albino iguana. Um, I don't have any of those, but I do have a couple of iguanas where in one case they reduce the amount of the yellow pigment to make her bluer and then another one in which they removed pretty much all the yellow and to make a bright red color morph. All right, so now I have to get them out of the, their enclosures and they're not real happy about this today. All right, come on. You're okay. So um, another reason um, an iguana might change color while I'm pulling her out of here is during mating season. That's when the, some of the males get much brighter colors um, to attract the females. And excuse me while I lift my bag up to pull my iguana out. Come on, turquoise. Come and, come and meet everybody. Um, okay. So I mentioned that they have claws for hanging on to trees and things. They're also really very good for hanging on to the center of pet carriers. Oh, and now she's biting too. Okay, come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I can't show them your pretty stomach without letting go. Come on. All right, well. Hey. All right, so this is turquoise. Um, I got her from the Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary, a, a wonderful organization up in the Phoenix area. And this was a young blue morph who was turned into them. Now you notice she's not totally blue, although she does tend to be a, a little more blue-greenish than Ezra was. But if you look at her, stomach and her belly. You notice how sky blue that is. And it kind of reminds me of the turquoise uh, that's popular down here. And so by, they did this by breeding the iguanas and reducing the amount of the yellow pigment. And so this would be kind of an azanthic blue morph green iguana. And, um, but you can tell she still has a, a lot of green. She even has some of the orange coloration from the Central American uh, type of green iguana. So um, she hasn't lost all the other pigments, but just brought out the, the lovely blue pigment um, on her underside. All right, thank you, okay. Now I gotta get her back in there. 
Thank you. All right. Some of these, this is their first time being held up and demonstrated. Uh, so they're, they're not quite socialized to being display objects. But then you can also go the other way, where you remove a lot of the yellow pigment and bring out the red uh, pigments that you would normally see during mating season. All right. Hang on. Okay. Uh. So this is a red color morph. Green iguana. Once again, he's uh, not waiting to emerge. Here we go. I'll take you out this way. Uh, the joys of live talks with not quite cooperative animals. Now this is Chili, and he, and this one's a male. Um, okay. Come on, Chili, relax, relax. Say hi to everyone, Chili. Hi, say hi to everyone. Yes, you can be famous. And you notice he doesn't have a whole lot of green. He may still have some of the blue pigments um, around his face and, and around his chin, but mostly he is this magnificent orange color. And during mating season, which is kind of right now, um, his orange is really spectacular. But he's, he's bright orange year round. Um, and uh, sometimes people will sell baby iguanas saying, you know, that they're going to stay bright blue and they don't. Uh, Chili is, I think, four years old now and he just gets more spectacular all the time. And you can see he's orange on all sides. Oh, yeah. um, and you even no can notice that the melanin on his sides is a little reduced so that he's mostly just um, a solid orange color. Although he does have the black stripes, the melanin stripes on his tail. So that's what you can do with captive breeding of reptiles. You can bring out the different colors that you want. You can see, see he's pretty. And while we have him, if you're interested in how males, uh, some of the different morphological differences between males and females, you notice he's kind of got a little jowl and that his some tympanic scale um, is spectacularly colored. This is his ear, and of course he has his lovely eye. Okay, where's the camera? There we go. Um, and, you know, even his eye is kind of orangish.